Thanks for tuning in to Stampscaping 101. I had so much fun um, stamping out my previous scene right here that I wanted to do another one. I'd like to how I'd like to how this light kind of traveled through that canyon like that, and just what you can do with pigment ink with this image right here. And I immediately thought of kind of the I don't know if it'd be the polar extreme, but you know, as far as um, time of day goes, maybe so. You know, from something in you know day to night and having the same type of thing done with uh, moonlight in here. Different imagery, you know, in the foreground, but uh, pretty much the same technique, just using a different color scheme right there and changes the time of day, but um, anyways, I really felt like uh, doing that little passage of a uh, um, illuminated fog throughout there and to kind of uh, uh, kind of mimic the uh, the pathway of the stream, you know, when it comes to moisture and whatnot. And uh, I really kind of went a little bit more extreme with it this time. I really darkened up this wall right here to bring kind of more attention to this um, right wall here. And then I went up into the uh, little crevasses, you know, with a little bit more pigment ink. You know, I started doing it in here, but I was a little bit more conservative with it until I kind of went, I don't know, a lot, you know, I used a lot more of the pigment ink on this one right here, so freed up me, you know, freed me up a little bit to uh, kind of experiment with the image a little bit more and to see what it can take, and um, I haven't used this image a lot because it's discontinued kind of off and on throughout the years and whatnot, but um, I don't know, it certainly is a really strong visual lead-in, you know, for uh for a scene, and it's really fun to do it, you know, different types of um, foreground elements with it, you know, because kind of a visual, um, kind of a vantage point to set up, uh, you know, different types of figures in here. You don't need, you know, to put something up there, but, you know, the possibility is there. You can also just leave it open and kind of a first person type of thing, you know, it puts us on the ledge, kind of overlooking that, um, you know, this kind of grand vista type of. Uh, settings so anyways if you choose to watch the video i hope you enjoy it and thanks as always for tuning into the channel okay in doing my last scene i kind of saw the future the immediate future of this design and what the next scene i wanted to work on was already but uh i really loved the uh, kind of this canyon light, and I thought I can be a little bit more gutsy on this one, uh, and to go for something um, else using that same type of theme. Okay, so this is the, the canyon, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe off some of this bottom portion right here, because I want there to be this kind of silhouette of, a, of this wolf kind of looking down into the valley. All right, now there's going to be some streaming light coming from right in here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe off this portion right here. See where that kind of this near um, hill is? And then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe off some of this ink right up here. And we'll have some kind of this light coming from in. So can you see where I've kind of dried that off right up here? And I've done a, a video on this before. It's called a... Eh, I don't remember actually. It's kind of selective. Um, um, see, I already forgot. Um, selective impressions for um, maybe mood and depth, I think. Anyways, that's the idea. You kind of wipe off certain portions of your designs, not to not stamp out, but to stamp out lighter so that you're controlling value just in a very easy way, just by rubbing, you know, ink off of your impressions like that. So you can utilize that uh, as kind of a head start towards your lighting scheme, or, you know, you can say that it's um, establishing your lighting scheme, at least as it uh, relates to the specific, you know, the, the particular... Um, images that you're doing that to. Okay, we'll do it on another image that I'm going to stamp in here too. Okay, 
I'm, <laughs> I'm using a little bit more pressure right around those dry areas too because I did take off you know a pretty decent amount of ink so it's just not you know it's not moist so I do want to get a decent amount of that off on the paper like that so see that looks like it's just kind of not stamped well but actually that's kind of your lighting coming through there all right I want it to be real hazy I want it to be this kind of real kind of a strong nighttime light with this moon in here okay all right this is the spooky moon let me just use this one right here Our narrow block i could use the same one but it's a touch big this one's a little bit small it'll hang off a little bit but that's all right okay so let's go i was trying to decide on what size moon and this one's kind of a intermediate size right here so that would be good okay so all right i'm trying to think of a color that i want to stamp this and maybe the memento bahama blue or something i don't want to go too light i don't want to go too dark either though that's for sure or well maybe Maybe it will go really dark, but then we'll remove a lot of that ink, like I was just mentioning. So let's go with the Prussian blue. I love this really dark blue, okay? But I don't want it everywhere in that value, okay? I want it a little bit lighter. I'll tell you what, let me do some of this too. Let's vary it a little bit, maybe, um, with some pen here. This is a manganese blue, which is basically, a, it's a pretty light and bright blue. Okay. Come around like that. <laughs> maybe like a little Corona or something like that. I don't want that, though, but... Um, or it to be that strong, but what I'll do is I'll just take a paper towel like this, a dry one. Just wad it up like so, and then let's kind of soften some edges around here. Okay, and... Go in here like so. I'm kind of doing the perimeter a little bit too. Dabbing around in here in the actual moon so that it doesn't stamp out as darker in here so that it's kind of fading out like it's kind of glowing that's the idea it's always kind of hard to tell how much ink to remove sometimes you remove not enough and it's like you didn't do anything to it and I wouldn't say that you know you take off so much that you can't see it but but it is possible okay let me mask some of this off. All right, now I'm going to have the moon kind of offset. Oops. I need to wash off my uh, tack and peel here. It's not as tacky. You just kind of rinse these blocks off in the uh, sink and let them air dry. All right, so off center, okay? There's no kind of right side up or down on this, but I think I will mask off this. Uh, Canyon. Okay, I'll, I'll put my finger right where the moon is so I know, just in general. Okay, something like that. Now, I mean, I could get some more of this texture in there. Why not just use another impression over here? Go like so. Just to get a little bit of that texture in here, okay? Alright. This is really not sticky. It gets kind of dusty over time, and then you kind of wash this off, and it's... It becomes incredibly tacky and, like, brand new. Okay, let's do a foreground here. Let's just do this in black. And 
I did another scene doing uh, using this, and uh, I went all the way up to this kind of um, tree line. I'm going to stamp this down a little bit lower, though, so that I have a little bit more space in between this and this, so that hopefully I can get um, a good, strong silhouette of uh, a wolf that I plan on putting in this one. Okay, if I stamp it too high up here, and then I have that tree line really dark, and if you stamp something kind of right against it, you really can't out make out the shape of this because there's all this texture in here. But it's light in there. Um, it'll be going this way, actually. And so I wanted to create kind of a cloudy, kind of a kind of amorphic um, area down here as though there were um, clouds or some kind of low-lying fog coming through this uh, canyon right here and uh, the valley, you know. And uh, I'd have this kind of illuminated fog through here. I'm going to make this really dark um, this time in this scene. Which normally I wouldn't do because I wouldn't kind of eradicate the, uh, the kind of the textures of the, uh, the imagery, but I think it'll look really dramatic that way. We'll see. Okay, let's go with a little bit of gray. Now I'm just kind of following the, uh, the lighting patterns on my design itself. There's some areas kind of on, on these uh, contoured um, ridges that are in shadow, and I'm just kind of following that uh, lighting scheme, okay? My tip's getting a little worn here. Let me switch it around. Okay, this canyon wall right here is going to be in kind of darkness right here. Um, and this will be an early color, of course. It's like the first color I'm using, but, you know, it's... Uh, it will kind of establish my uh, general lighting scheme of this scene. As light as it is in value. Kind of general cloudy-ish area down here. through here. I made it a little bit lighter over here. I should make it lighter over on this side. Okay. This kind of grayscale kind of approach is a pretty fast and easy way to uh, do that. Um, after doing that on um, some recent scenes, I mean I've done it before throughout the years. Um, kind of establish a grayscale kind of foundation and then add my color later. So it's kind of establishing a grayscale, which means I'm kind of establishing my um, lighting scheme. And right now, see, I don't have to think about color or anything like that. It's just kind of looking for kind of lights and darks. And then you can layer your color on over the top of that if you want. Because, uh, you know, the grays are somewhat neutral. 
you know, they're temperature-less. They're not neutral in terms of value, you know, there's lighter lights and darks. But, um, okay, putting some of this across my moon so it's not just so stark um, white. wall right here to be fairly dark and we'll make this one back fairly dark just so it kind of carries out the uh, image to the edge of the card all right that looks good let's move on to some color now uh, let's try the salvia blue let's kind of make this a nice cool night so I'll add my blue tones. I'm just using the same tip here too, okay? You don't need to, uh, you don't need to change tips um, unless you want to. I usually use the previous color to kind of form an intermediate tone when I transition to my next one. And look, you know, if I'm changing kind of colors completely, like from a green to an orange or something like that, I'll switch tips. But uh, otherwise, I just keep using the same one. Makes it a lot easier. Things blend in perfectly because you're forming kind of a color in between uh, the previous one and the current one by having some ink remaining in your tip there. See that coming in? See this lighting right in here? All right, let's move on into our next tone. Let's try the Memento, the Bahama blue. It's a little bit of a darker blue. You don't really see that salvia too much because it's gone over the top of the gray, but you can kind of see that bluish tinge in there, can't you? Okay. And see, here's the Bahama blue. Doesn't look like this blue because the grays underneath show through because these transparent colors that we're working with when it comes to dye-based ink characteristics. buildup is starting to become pretty saturated, which means this uh, page pulp, the paper pulp, is starting to become super saturated with ink. So when I add this down and I go like that, sometimes it's almost like removing some of the ink. So I'll either, I get, you know, you can do several things if that starts happening. I would recommend working with it because it's easier to kind of blend the colors out. But if you want it to get darker, um, you might have to kind of let the ink set up a little bit and soak into the paper. I mean, it depends on the humidity and everything of where you are, where you're located, you know, which will factor into how much drying time. You can always heat set it with a heat gun or something like that. Or what I do is I just move into a thinner style of ink, which would be the Marvy um, inks. They're very thin in viscosity. Okay. Um, you'll still have, you know, these memento inks um, on your surface here and in the brush, but it'll kind of start to transition out of that and into um, into your other tones. Okay, so this is a blue right here. It's blue, it's just, that's what it's called. That's the name of it from Marvy. You can see that kind of painted on there. See how much darker it got? 
and that's just with a couple swipes. If I kind of add a little bit more, it'll start getting darker. But all right, so that's one of my lessons um, that I've gone over. Um, I usually mention it in all my videos, but what you do is when you get to a certain um, saturation, and this could be on matte cardstock as well, but if you build up your colors, see when I go like that, and I, you know, I can really squeeze out a lot of ink, that will blend in really nicely. And that's by having enough ink, kind of as your foundation um, colors or tone. It could be one ink, or it could be, you know, you could have several base layers too. But just in general, when you have enough ink laid down, it really makes those darker colors really blend into your um, composition really nicely because it's so wet. It's almost like, you know, applying ink onto kind of like glass or something like that. It just really kind of spreads out nicely. Okay, so get that good foundation going with your lightest of tones and you will you won't regret it. It'll look much richer as an end result too by having kind of a nice thick coating um, with those lightest of colors. dramatic. Um, the dark you go, the more contrast there is. Okay, let me make this wall right here a little bit darker. Okay, that was kind of my idea, my vision here with this scene. I wanted to make um, one of these walls really quite dark right here to uh, really emphasize this light coming through here. Okay. This is um, the Prussian blue, quite dark. Prussian blue <laughs> really coats and stains, which is what dye, how dye-based inks color things. They stain things. Let's go to black. I feel a waterfall scene coming on sometime soon. It's starting to get hot here in uh, Southern California. It was almost in the, the 90s and I'm sitting right here stepping out kind of a cool color scheme right here. Kind of as it's, I don't know, it's probably like 80 some odd degrees right here in the office my studio. Okay, I'm kind of giving my um, ledge a little bit of um, mass and a little bit of separation from the, uh, the canyon, uh, the drop off right there into the canyon, into that kind of cloud, just kind of making the edge of my ledge a little bit darker or a lot darker. What I'm doing is I'm kind of going like this 
on the side like that, right over the top of that, right there, for that separation between here and there. Okay, let's do a nice vignette, okay? Kind of darker surrounding edge. foot wall or so. All right, let me switch back to kind of a, a little bit of a cleaner tip here. I want some more blue in these walls right here. They're a little bit too anemic you know, without some color, okay? So let me just go back to the salvia blue and just blend in some of that into the mix. Let's take it right down into that, next to the water, the river. Okay, let's add some down here, kind of an extra glaze of tone. And that, you know, that water is a little bit too bright, so let's go in and add a little bit of tone to that. That's a little bit better. Not quite so anemic down here. And if I don't make it dark enough, you can't really see that kind of fogging effect that I'll add with some of the uh, pigment ink. Okay, there's a pen. Go in and uh, kind of get in some more detailed areas with a similar color to 
that salvia blue. Alcoholic pens, they won't, um, you know, mix with the uh, the dye base inks that you've just laid down because they're two different binders. Okay, and one of the nice things about alcoholic pens is just so many values they come in. They so they come in your very light values like this uh, aquamarine. If there's a pale blue color, you know, called something like pale blue. That's probably you know another great one to uh, to use. Okay, so. This is always one of my, uh, I wouldn't call it a dilemma, but um, I'm always kind of wondering if I should add in my foreground elements first, or if I should add in things like my pigment ink effects first. And with the foreground types of elements, so if I add them too dark, with something like the Versafine, or even dye-based ink, I might have to wait for it to dry a little bit because this page gets a little bit moist and saturated with ink. Um, but sometimes if I lay down that foggy effect and I stamp over it with something, um, those types of that type of media that's used in those effects, um, they don't stamp over very easily, okay? And sometimes those things show through, things that are supposed to be in the foreground and nice and solid, you know, dark, black. All right, so I think maybe it, it will be a little bit of both. I'm not sure. Okay, so let's try um, some hero arts. I just had it in my previous scene. Where did it go? I should have used some of this in my previous scene. Some of that yellow. All right, let's use... Okay, so let's use some hero arts. It's the unicorn white pigment ink. Super juicy, and it probably will be for the next ten years if I if I use it every day. You know, it just pigment inks are really really juicy. So I thick paint. Okay, we don't want a lot on here. We just want you know kind of a, a dry brush effect. Or if I tap it light enough, it will have that dry brush effect look. Okay, I like to go where light meets dark. And I'll just start adding it down here. So it's kind of reiterating what I did with the wiping off some of the ink, okay? Before I made my impression using that moon. Okay, so kind of adding it in as an actual additive rather than, you know, achieving that look subtractively. Well, it'll add a little bit of kind of that essence to it. All right, so kind of adding this kind of now. Let me zoom in here. So this is where it's really light in here. That's where I'm going to add that kind of uh, glowing mist or fog in the canyon, and you know the general just kind of moisture in the air and have it be illuminated by this moonlight, which I thought would be kind of an interesting uh, look, kind of having that heavy, heavy kind of fog, illuminated fog glowing in the uh, canyon, like so. It's kind of creeping down here, huh? Maybe it's kind of like pouring in up the, uh, the slopes. See those, how those slopes are, and I kind of might add a little bit in there like so, okay? Because it kind of starts filling up all those little, you know, all those little areas within um, that just like kind of like a fine, you know, like a fine, uh, I don't know, I guess it's moisture, not a liquid, but um, I don't know, kind of giving it that kind of look, like it's uh, waves kind of, you know, floating in ever so slowly.
So you just kind of leave, you know, you over here I'll I'll leave it largely as is because the light isn't hitting over here. So kind of having it just kind of pouring in through the uh, through the canyon, kind of creeping around every little bend. Now down here, I wiped off a lot of that. So let's put some of this down there make it even more so. See how that kind of just disappears like that? Okay. <clears throat> Alright, now this is where I have to be careful because I don't want to use too much of this pigment ink where I'm going to stamp that wolf or my other objects, so maybe I'll kind of hold right here. Well, that is really fun to do. I, I think this canyon is, you try to make designs as three-dimensional as you can, in this case. But doing something like this, I mean, it, it, to me it really adds that extra dimension and it kind of pushes back that distant area by kind of obscuring it in this um, in this kind of foggy type of uh, technique. You know, I guess in a sense, there's here's this moonlight kind of coming. You know, this moon as a source of light, and it look, you know, it's almost like pouring through there, like like milk or something like that. In terms of the uh, kind of the overall look of it. All right, I kind of put a too strong of a streak of that color over the top. This is where you can actually do kind of, you know, somewhat of a subtractive process. You're not really subtracting anything that you've done in there, but it's a way to subdue it a little bit, you know, obscure some areas. Okay, let's come in here. I want that kind of fog to look like it's almost um, kind of alive and breathing like it's an entity, you know, come to whatever kind of light your way in the darkness. All right, I thought I was done with that, but I thought that looked really good. And plus, um, when this dries, this pigment ink, it dries uh, darker than what it likes, looks like when you've applied it. So you kind of have to go a little bit lighter um, than what you think you'll need um, when doing that. Okay, let's add in some other little effects right back in here. The form of the white gel pen, okay. There's little ridge lines right up here, as I mentioned in my previous video, but if you didn't watch that, kind of right along these ridges, kind of facing the light, I'll put a few little illuminating um, little highlights with just a white gel pen like this. And it kind of, it kind of strengthens the, uh, the lighting within the scene, saying that, you know, there's light, you know, the moonlight is bright enough 
are light enough to uh, to illuminate those sides to see where it gives a little extra dimension right here here right here and I'll add some more to these ones right here okay kind of where it's more lit um, maybe I'll add a few more dots like that and then that water We'll add a few little kind of sparkly kind of highlights. And there we'll kind of reestablish uh, some of that lightness of the uh, paper. Kind of giving it this horizontal kind of a pattern as a uh, bodies of water, you know, looking out over uh, over the surface, you know, there's these horizontal striations and lit kind of specular light, light that's brighter than white you know, in the form of those little shimmers, I don't know if you can see that down in that area, but you can certainly see all that fog, illuminated fog, huh? Okay, so, let's get to it. Let's get to put our star of the uh, scene in here. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I should do the bigger elements first. Oh, let's just go for it. All right, I'm using Versafine. I want something nice and dark and bold against this background in here. Okay. Nice light, even pressure. And why don't we flank him with uh, a couple larger trees? Let's go with the same pigment ink here. So it's nice and dark. I almost feel like using. Oh, let me see. I almost feel like going with this uh, kind of craggy branch here in the forehead. Maybe I'll do that. This is the spooky branch. There's one impression. It's kind of reminds me of this uh, photo from Ansel Adams. Not this scene, but just kind of this idea of this um, branch on top of Sentinel Dome in Yosemite. It was a full, kind of this almost like bonsai tree, but then, uh, I don't know, somewhere along the line it. Uh, it died. It's just kind of like a stump now. 
Maybe from too much traffic up there or something. Foot traffic. <laughs> Not car traffic. Alright, so add some of it down like so. Finishing touches here. Let's add a little bit of a stronger vignette. We have some really strong black impressions right down here, okay? We have that area up there. Let's match. Well, maybe not quite match, but kind of mimic kind of the stronger values from down below. Just in a small area right up here. just to kind of frame off the scene really nicely in a similar value to the bottom corners of the piece. All right, now here's just a tiny little bit, so I'll just put a little bit here in the corner. About like so. Now, we probably wouldn't see this, you know, on a moonlit light, full moon at least, but let's say that there's no city lights or anything like that, so, you know, maybe you could stand to use a few little kind of stars after all this scene is supposed to be kind of, you know, a little bit more kind of magical. So I add that little twinkly little bits. Here. Okay. Some little stars like that for our main character in the piece. Alright. And maybe there's a few little highlights of moonlight on our ridge, our ledge here. Or maybe a few, just on a couple of these little foreground branches. Normally, if I add some of these um, little highlights on, on, on my branches, if they're dye based ink, and if I don't like them, I can wipe them right off, but I'm putting them on top of pigment ink, so that pigment ink is there to stay. Um, so, or, if I wipe it, actually it's the opposite, it's not there to stay. If I wipe that pigment ink, it'll smear on there still. So I want to be kind of a little bit more decisive with my gel pen here. It's not precarious or anything like that, just don't kind of go overboard with it, kind of hold it at an arm's distance and kind of get a feel for it, what it's looking like, and it'll be an easy process for you. Okay, so it just kind of pulls it out from the background a little bit. kind of that moonlit illumination kind of coming through that area right in here. 
the foreground to this kind of foggier foreground and whatnot. But um, anyways, that's what I was going for right there. This little composition. It's a pretty simple composition. You now we're talking about kind of mid, you know, background, midground, foreground here, and. Uh, but a lot of it for me is kind of this little passageway in here of light and that kind of fog illuminating that um, way. So, I mean, canyons and this little stream right here are certainly um, visual lead-ins, okay? In this case, I just happen to have this foreground in here, you know, with this character. So hopefully this is the way this kind of visual narrative works, you know. I would think that if someone looks at this, you know, their first thing is to look at this character kind of looking that way or whatever and then I think our eye goes right up the stream right to that moon I, you know I think we do this kind of thing then we kind of look back like that you know it kind of creates this little circular well I don't know if it's a circular it's maybe an oval pattern or something like that where um, you know we look at that follow up here and come around so that's kind of the, uh, the visual kind of pathway that uh, one would follow. All right, so anyways, um, King of the Canyon, I like that name it for that uh, scene. A lot of fun to do. I really enjoyed um, adding all that pigment ink throughout there. I kind of went overboard, but, um, but I do like it. I like that kind of feel. For me, it, um, there's the moon and that wolf right here, but for me, I, I tend to look at this area right in here um, as far as the type of thing that interests me. You know, it's that space in between the walls, you know, kind of suspended in the air. And it's all that kind of negative space in there that's being illuminated and I think kind of creates the character for the uh, uh, this overall composition, even though, you know, the wolf and kind of the moon are stronger. Um, Kind of attention getters in terms of uh, the visuals in here, but uh, for me it's kind of what's happening kind of right in there. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the scene. Thanks as always for watching. And if you have any questions, drop us a note in the comment section.